Hey, Jim Schultz here. Welcome back to The Daily Bread. So, unknown gods. This whole idea of unknown gods, this is super fascinating to me. And I probably heard this for the first time. It was maybe like six or nine months ago. And I was like, wait, what? An unknown god in scripture? Like, this is, this is really, really crazy. And then this whole idea was actually reiterated to me uh, last Sunday in our sermon here in St. Pete at local church. This is the church that Autumn and I have found. This is the church that we believe is going to be our home for the next, you know, one, two, 20, 30, 40 years or thereabouts. So, unknown guys, let's set the scene because this all goes down in Acts 17. Acts 17, Paul arrives in Athens, right? Paul shows up on the scene, and he is so troubled by what he finds in the city. Like, he is so just unsettled by what he sees before him. He sees a city. He sees people just worshiping hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of gods, right? Just idolatry for as far as the eye can see. And this is very, very, you know, unsettling to him for obvious reasons. So he comes into the city. He goes into the synagogues. He goes into the town squares. He goes basically, you know, every place where people might be. And he starts to preach the gospel, right? He starts to share about the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And this is where we come to verse 22. And here's where the unknown gods hold, the, the unknown gods business really starts to show up. So verse 22, I'll read this for you guys. So Paul then stood up in the meeting of Areopagus, I believe that's correct, and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. So that's pretty wild, right? That's pretty crazy stuff, this whole unknown God idea. So let's take a few minutes, you know, maybe like 14 or 16, and let's unpack what's going on here. All right, so that's a pretty wild scene back there in Athens, you know, 2,000 years ago. I mean, they had all these gods, right? They had all these different, you know, idols that they were worshiping, but they were afraid that they were missing something. Right? They were afraid that they maybe missed the mark a little bit. There was an I that they didn't dot. There was a T that they didn't cross. And so they had to offer up this, this statue, right? this image of idolatry to an unknown God, even though they had gods for you know, money and power and sex and beauty and farming and fertility. I mean, whatever, right? You name it, they had a God for it. And yet they still felt the need to offer up this little safety blanket, right? This little catch-all just in case they were missing something. When I first read that, it really kind of took me by surprise. Like I was not really expecting that at all in the scripture and I just found it to be so, uh, I mean, it was fascinating and it was puzzling. I was like, why would they do that? Like why would they feel the need to do that? They clearly didn't have a problem idolizing the things that they saw fit to idolize. Right? They clearly didn't have a problem, problem worshiping the things that they saw fit to worship. So why would they feel the need to offer up you know, a statue or some, some medium of worship to this unknown God, to this God that they couldn't even label, to this God that, that they couldn't even you know, accurately depict what it is they were trying to accomplish with their worship? And then it hit me. And, you know, the next minute or two, this is pure conjecture. These are my own, you know, ideas, my own thoughts. This is not necessarily scripturally based per se, but I do hope it will point us in the direction that God wants all of us to go. I don't think it was as much of their being afraid that they were missing something. I actually think they knew they were missing something. I don't think it was their being afraid that there was some, you know, some thing, some box that they weren't checking, some, some I that they weren't dotting, some T that they weren't crossing. I don't think they were afraid that they were missing something. I think even though they had all these other things, even though they had all these other gods, for literally every aspect of daily life, they knew that they were incomplete. They knew 
that they were still at least a little bit, if not a lot of it, empty. And so they offered up worship to this unknown God. And I just find that to be just really, really crazy because they had all their bases covered, but they weren't, right? They had all these gods to meet all their needs, but they weren't. And so they had to offer up this unknown God. And guys, I think Athens 2,000 years ago, I think that's St. Pete today. I think that's Chicago today. I think that's Charlotte today. I think that's Detroit today. I think that's Memphis today. And I think there are at least two reasons that clearly connect what we read in Scripture 2,000 years ago to the world that we live in today. All right, now it's easy to dismiss, right? What you read here is like, ah, Jim, those people were crazy, right? They're just simple-minded folk from 2,000 years ago. They're not like us. They're not like me, right? I'm smart. I'm clever. Right? I would never pray to an unknown God. Right? I'd never do anything silly like that. Offer up some statue that I can't even label color correctly and then pray to that unknown God. Oh, really? I'd like to challenge you on that a bit today. I'd like to push you on that a bit today because what this unknown God back in Athens and inside of Scripture really reveals to us is our desperate need for the gospel, your desperate need for the gospel, my desperate need for the gospel. You don't even have to be a Christian to appreciate the couple of ways that I think this reveals to us our desperate need for the gospel. Now, I don't know, man, my non-Christian or friends out there, let me know in the comments below. Am I totally off base with this? Am I totally off base with the next three, four, five, six minutes of discussion? I would love to know from both my Christian friends and my non-Christian friends out there. But if you're not a believer, I'd like to know, am I totally missing the mark here? Because let's be honest, I've missed the mark a time or two in my, uh, in my day. Number one. All of us, you, me, your neighbor, your coworker, your boss, everybody, we're all trying to save ourselves. You are trying to save yourself. I am trying to save myself. I'm trying to figure out, you're trying to figure out what do we have to do to get right with the world, right? What do I have to do to get right with this this generic God, right? This ethereal being, this universal intelligence that must have some pretty serious clout, right? To be able to create all the things that are around me, right? To be able to, you know, have developed all the things that I see on a daily basis. Man, I got to get right with this guy. I got to get right with this gal, right? I got to do this now. Like, what do I have to do? Who do I have to talk to? Who do I have to see? Where do I need to be? Like, you let me know. It's all about me. It's all about you, right? Think about that for a minute. It's all about you saving you, right? And I think that this is the first thing that this unknown God really reminds us of. This is the world that we live in today. This is not Athens 2,000 years ago, right? This is Instagram Live 2021, right? This is TikTok Live 2021, right? This is fill in the blank live 2021. This is live streaming 2021. I'm actually not live streaming this. I probably should be. That would have made that, you know, that line a little bit more effective, but you can do everything yourself, right? Your power comes from within. If something is missing, it's because you haven't done enough. That's the unknown God, right? That's your unknown God. That's my unknown God. Our feeling like we can save ourselves and we just need this unknown God to kind of fill in the blank, to kind of cover up that hole, to kind of fill in that emptiness. That's exactly what we see today in the world that we live in right now. And it's exactly what the people in Athens were experiencing 2,000 years ago. So that's the first thing that I think is happening here. That's kind of the first reason why I think this unknown God business is pretty relevant. But here's the second reason. Deep down, like deep down, I believe, and I actually think that Scripture says as much. I think this is all over Scripture. Again, this is still kind of my conjecture, but I don't know, man. I think this is littered all over the Bible. We all know that we are missing something. Like, we all know that something is missing. And I kind of referenced this a couple of minutes ago as we kind of let off the daily bread today. But we all know that the idols that we create for ourselves, they're never truly going to satisfy 
right? The idols that I, that I exalt, that I elevate and put on this pedestal in my life, they're never going to be enough. And it doesn't matter what it is. It could be money. It could be status. It could be beauty, right? It could be success. It could be performance. It could be relationships. It doesn't matter what our, you know, mode of idolatry might be. It's never truly going to satisfy. So we might laugh at the people 2,000 years ago in Athens. But guys, we do the exact same thing every single day in our own hearts. You do it and I do it. Every single day, we are idle factories. Our hearts are idle factories. I heard someone once say that before. I can't remember exactly who it was, but those are not my own words or my own thoughts. But that's, man, that is so, so true. We do the exact same thing. We do the exact same thing with our own unknown gods. And so, you know, the emptiness, the longing, the, the, the dissatisfaction that is always there, even after we achieve X, Y, or Z, I think that is more evidence of this unknown God. And this is kind of what Paul was alluding to in that last little bit of the verse where he said, you are so ignorant to what is going on here, right? Th this unknown God, like this is what you've been searching for all along, right? This is the gospel of Jesus, right? This is, you know, the, the life, death, and resurrection of, of Jesus Christ himself. You continue to dismiss it. You continue to ignore it. You continue to, you know, not recognize it and it's been right in front of you all along. And so, I don't know, guys, even if you're not a Christian, right? I think, I hope that maybe you're tracking with me on this one. You know, this dissatisfaction that we feel, this whole idea that we're trying to save ourselves, you know, there is this insatiable hunger that we all have and we think that more money and more trophies and more awards and more attaboys are going to satisfy that hunger, but they never do. They never do. And it's really the unknown God that we are all searching for. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of bouncing between two different definitions of this unknown God, which is clear evidence that we're still in conjecture mode here on the Daily Bread, right? But we all try to elevate these things into an unknown God status when the unknown God that we're all searching for is actually the real God, the God of the Bible through his son, Jesus. So I don't know. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. So to close out the, uh, the daily bread today, here's kind of a personal take on everything that we're talking about. So oftentimes, i.e. every time that I put together a faith-based video, whether it be a daily bread or truth talk or something else, I want you guys to know that I'm sharing all of this for my own benefit too. Like I am sharing the story today, talking about unknown gods, talking about the scripture. Like I'm sharing all the things that I feel God has called me to share, but I'm doing so in a way that hopefully I hear them too. Hopefully I begin to apply these things too. So I'm very much speaking to myself when it comes to all of this. But from a personal standpoint, here's a great example of how I have failed to recognize the unknown God in my own life. Now I could go, you know, the fitness side of things. I could go bodybuilding. You know, I've done that quite a bit in the past. Let's kind of go the finance angle of things, which is kind of a new take on, you know, some of the things I've struggled with in my life. If I go back to my doctoral program, in the beginning of my doctoral program, so this was like 2005 when I started at the University of Memphis, man, it was all I cared about. And I was so excited. Like, I was so fired up for my doctoral program. I was like, man, this is going to be amazing. Like, I'm going to be a professor. I'm going to finally graduate. I'm going to be done being a student. I'm going to be up and running with my career. And let me tell you guys something. I really felt like that's all I cared about. I really felt like once that happened, I would be set. And as a result, on the pedestal that was my pursuit of a PhD, there was no room for God. There was no room whatsoever for God. I was like, man, it's already, it's already jam-packed to the hilt. Like, we don't have any room up there for Jesus, man. Like, it's just, you know, it, it's standing room only, and it's not even standing room only. Like, there's nothing up there for him. It was 100% about me, about my goals, about my abilities, about my education, about my skills, about my success, about my career. This was my, this was my known God at the time. Well, let me tell you guys something. That was 12 years ago. I graduated in 2009, it's 2021 now. 
I am very thankful to God for my finance career and all the ups and the downs and the twists and the turns. And I mean, there are things that have happened inside of my finance career that I never saw coming. There are things that have happened inside of my finance career that I'm like, man, this is not what I signed up for. Like what happened? This is not what I was hoping for. And, you know, et cetera, et cetera. If nothing else, all of this, all of the experience that I've had all of the experiences, there have been multiple, all of the experiences that I've had inside of the world of finance over these last 12 years, if nothing else, they have revealed to me my unknown God all along. They have revealed to me the unknown God that for so long I couldn't quite put my finger on. I felt like it was finance. I felt like it was my PhD. I felt like it was being a professor, right? Right before I got kicked to the curb at the university that I was at. Like, I felt like it was all these different things. And all along, it wasn't, right? All along, it was truly the God of the Bible. All along, it was truly the God of the Bible, the God of Scripture through his son, Jesus. And as I look back, I'm like, man, these certain things that happened, it was so obvious, right? It was so clear. I couldn't figure it out in the time, but I, looking back on these through the rearview mirror, I'm like, man, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy how God, you know, works in that way. So the ultimate irony, right? Just like the people in Athens, just like my experience with finance, and I'm willing to bet your experience right now with fill in the blank, the unknown God that you can't quite put your finger on is actually the known God that we all know is there, that we all recognize is actually, you know, the, the orchestrator pulling the strings on all these little things that we like to call, you know, daily life. And so I don't know, guys, I think that's an interesting little, uh, an interesting little something to do there in, in scripture. And it really kind of snuck up on me when I read it the first time and, my hope today, my prayer today is that maybe this hits you in the same way that it hit me. Like maybe this kind of surprises you. Maybe this kind of wakes you up. Maybe this kind of just hits you a little bit differently, you know, through the power of God, through God's word that it really kind of opens your eyes and opens your heart to what you have been ignoring and what you have been missing all along. So that's it, guys. That is the daily bread uh, this afternoon. If you guys made it this far in the video, hey, I really appreciate you. I'm so humbled that you take your time out of your day or your morning or your afternoon or your evening to hang out with me. And I really, really hope that God spoke to you in some way, shape, or form that makes sense to only you, right? With what you're going on in your life and the journey that he has you on at this juncture in your time. I really hope and pray that... Uh, that that this uh, that the daily bread does speak to you in a way that really only makes sense to you. If you guys wanted to like the video or share the video or subscribe to the channel, any of the above would be amazing ways to support what we're trying to do here. And uh, that's it. I think the daily bread has officially come to a close. And so I will see you guys next time.